Have you been told to differentiate your instruction but don't know where to start? Are you encouraged to access students' digital brains through blended learning techniques but wonder what that really looks like? If this is you, you're not alone. Teachers often are not given the tools to effectively do either. I'm going to explain some simple, concrete ways to do both. The first thing you need to consider is the physical classroom environment. Set your desks or tables up to accommodate four students. I'll explain more about this later. Leave enough room between the desks for you to walk around and work with table groups during your lesson. Eliminate clutter on your shelves and walls, as too much stimulation can be distracting to your intended learning goals. Now for the seating. Each group of four students should be heterogeneous and tied directly to your most recent assessment data. Seats 1 through 4 should correspond to a high score, a low score, and two middle scores, promoting collaboration and teamwork during group work time. This flexible seating arrangement changes after every assessment, giving students a chance to move throughout the year. So now the students are in their seats, but how do you teach them all at differentiated levels? To effectively teach to the whole group, you must know what students already do and don't know. Especially with middle and high school students, learning gaps can be all over the map. State and district data isn't recent and doesn't always apply to what you're teaching. This is why entrance tickets are important. As the teacher, you already know the main learning outcomes for this unit. Plan small. Think in two-day chunks. What are the main things that students will need to know after the first two lessons? Create and give an entrance ticket prior to the first lesson so you know where your students are coming in. Make it about four questions in length, no longer. It's easy to grade and easy to record. File this initial data in an Excel spreadsheet. Sort it from highest to lowest score. These are your targeted instruction groups for the second day. After whole group instruction, pull the lowest group first. They will need help before doing the work on their own. Explain the concepts in greater detail and have students work together with you on some practice problems. As time allows, pull more groups. Ask clarifying questions. Give students similar problems to those related to the learning goal and observe how they are solved. Students' gaps are often further exposed in these small groups, and you will give them the individual assistance they need. This is also where you assign differentiated skills for practice. My favorite site for differentiated math skills practice is Khan Academy. Topics range from addition to calculus. YouTube videos illustrate each concept step by step. Students can also work through practice problems related to each skill. But how does this help teachers differentiate? How do students keep track of what they are working on within the site? Once a student signs into Khan Academy with her username and password, she is prompted to take a diagnostic pretest. It's a simple quiz, less than 10 questions in length. After completed, skills will be suggested on her learning dashboard based on individual learning gaps. Teachers can also assign skills, or students can add skills they know they need to practice. Teachers can use the reports within their coaching tab to check student progress, including skills practiced, time spent, videos watched, and more. This data can be used to pull small groups and is also useful for student progress reports. Khan Academy is so beneficial for both low and high performing students that I assign 60 minutes per week as additional homework. By midweek, students have received whole and small group instruction as well as Khan Academy intervention. It's time for an exit ticket. Use the same entrance ticket. Add this data to your Excel spreadsheet and look for growth. Struggling students may need additional practice or teacher help, while proficient or advanced kids can use Khan to challenge themselves. Repeat the cycle throughout your unit. Plan for another two to three days of instruction, create an entrance ticket, and gather data. Cluster your students and provide small group assistance and extra practice on Khan Academy, whether for intervention or acceleration. Give an exit ticket, gather data, Repeat. It's simple and effective. Now that you have some ideas about differentiating your instruction, let's discuss the idea of blended learning. Often teachers are given technology but don't know how to use it effectively. Blended learning offers several models that provide effective, meaningful technology use among your students. The biggest reason I love blended learning is that it helps me differentiate my instruction. There are several models, but for my classroom I use the rotation model. When I started doing this seven years ago, I began with station rotation because it was the easiest to manage. I have since moved to individual rotation. If you are new to blended learning, I would suggest starting with station rotation. As you become more comfortable with that, explore other options.
But what does this look like in a 60-minute class? What about a 90-minute class? What do you do if you don't have enough computers for all of your students to be online at the same time? No problem. We'll start by doing some simple division. All you need to know is your class length, class size, and the number of computers available in your room. We'll work backwards from there. Let's say I have 60 minutes with a class of 24 students and 8 laptops. 15 minutes is whole group instruction, leaving me 45 minutes for stations. I would do three 15-minute rotations. The stations would be bookwork, math games or vocabulary work, and computers. Every student would go to each station while I pulled small groups. The longer your class time and more computers available, the more flexible you can be. 20 minutes is ideal for stations. Besides Khan Academy, another online math station is IXL.com. IXL is great for targeted skill practice because there are almost 300 skills per grade level. The teacher reports are useful too. However, IXL isn't free. What if you have more than eight computers available? Great! Students can work on Khan Academy, IXL.com, online multiplication games. The sites are endless. Of course, computerized learning stations cannot replace your curriculum. There should be a healthy balance of book work, group discussion, and critical thinking problems that accompany online activities. To keep your students on task and help them stay organized, providing a weekly checklist of your expectations is beneficial. While you work with small groups, students can mark off each assignment as it is completed. Time management skills are developed, and you increase student focus during class time. There is no question what is due by the end of the week. The most difficult part of differentiation in blended learning is getting started. Change can be scary and uncomfortable. However, change is impossible without knowing where to start. I hope this presentation has given you some tools, maybe even some inspiration, to get started with these ideas in your own classroom. The possibilities are endless.